David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 2301 statics. We've got a rigid, 3D rigid body equilibrium problem here with a horizontal plate supported by two of these weird properly aligned hinges at D and E. Properly aligned means they resist no moment, which is kind of a weird thing for a hinge in any direction. And it's the, cable, the plate supported by a cable BF. The uh, hinge D is noted as resisting axial thrust along the x-axis, which implies that hinge E does not. And so we'll reflect that in the free body diagram here in a minute. And what we want to ultimately want to find out is the tension in that cable. It's acted on by one force that's 2160 pounds over here. 10 feet out from the origin. It's also noted that point F, where that cable is uh, attached, is right above point A, lying on the X, I mean the Z, Y plane. So the first thing in any of these problems is to do a free body diagram. Okay, I need to reflect the forces that hinges D and E. Remember D resist hint, uh, thrust along the X axis. So in my free body diagram, I'm going to reflect that one as having, D is having all three forces, a DZ, a DY, a DX. At E, it doesn't resist along the x-axis, so it just has an EZ and an EY. Notice how I show those in the positive directions just to be consistent with my calculations so I can know what a negative answer means. Although I'm not dealing with those answers for those two reactions, or reactions at E and D, I do want to be consistent in how I do all my free body diagrams. Then I've got the 2160 pounds. And it is acting 10 feet. I end up not needing what the dimensions of those hinges are, but they are equally spaced along the x-axis. Then I've got the force in the cable. Something like that. That would be TBF. It's a vector. And that's really all I need. i got 18 feet over here and 16 feet over here. There's a good free body diagram. That gives me a good start. Now normally I would get everything in Cartesian form and the uh, only thing really, I need to get the coordinates of some of these points. I'm only going to get the ones I really need. Oh, and I'm going to call this point here where the 2160X point G, just to give it a name because I'm going to be referring to it here in a minute. Second part is to, uh, or really the first real problem after I get a free body diagram is to express the tension of the cable BF as Cartesian. As usual on these tests, this is a logical step along the solution, the path of a solution, get everything in Cartesians. And so I need the coordinates of F and B so I can get a position vector and then a unit vector in that direction. Point F, draw it over here, is at zero in the X because it lies on the ZY plane and it's 18 tall and I mean 18 in the Y and 12 in the Z. Point B over here is at, it's in the XY plane, so it's at 16 in the X, 18 in the Y, and 0 in the Z. And what I really need is a first a position vector, convert that into a unit vector, would call that R F over B. And I need to get that by uh, coordinates of the tip, F, minus the coordinates of the tail. So I would say that R, F over B, is equal to what, 0 minus 18, 0 minus 16I plus 18 minus 18 J plus 12 minus 0 K. 
Doing the math, I get negative 16i plus 0j plus 12k. Divide by the magnitude of the sum of the squares, which is 16 squared and 12 squared, and which works out to be 20. And what I really have is a 3, 4, 5. It's not 2, it's 20. So what I'm basically going with is the basic formula that f is a vec any vector f is its magnitude times u, its unit vector. The unit vector is just these numbers, negative 16 divided by 20, 0, and then 12 divided by 20. So I can just write t, b, f out in that form, do the math. It's t, b, f the magnitude, which we don't know, but we're going to solve for, times the unit vector, negative 16 over 20, simplifies out as negative 0.8 i, 0 j, and 12 over 20, divided is a 0.6 k. And that's my answer. <laughs> Second question is to solve for the tension in the cable. Well, I could do some moments about one of those hinges, D or E, eliminate those unknowns. <clears throat> Still, I'd have three equations, three unknowns to solve for. So a more powerful solution method is to sum moments about a line. And so that's what I want to do. I want to sum moments about this x-axis to eliminate all five of those unknown forces. I look at the equation sheet and I see that the moment of a line is it's a dot product with a cross product. And the sum of the moments about the line, the x-axis, which passes through both D and E, is the dot product. Well, the things that create moment about the x-axis are the forces that don't intersect it. So that's the moment of the 2160 force plus the moment of the force in the cable, TBF. So both of those are dot products. And so the first one is a dot product of <coughs> M of the 2160 from the equation sheets, a dot product of U of the x-axis dotted with R cross F where R is any, from any point on the line to any point on the force. So look at my free body diagram. The logical one, the one with the most zeros, I want a bunch of zeros in my position vector, is to go from this corner O to point G as I've named it. And we'd call that R G over O, of course. And that just looks like, that just has a Y component. So uh, what I've got is a little 3x3 three three determinant. It looks like this. On the top, I have the unit vector of the x-axis, which is, since it's just x, it is 1, 0, 0. R, G over O is that position vector from O to point G, which is in the y direction, 10 units. So with this position vector in the middle row looks like 0, 10, 0. On the bottom row I have my force vector 0, 0, and negative 2160. So remember that's unit, position, force for those rows. The other thing that creates moment is the tension in the cable and that's MTBF as I've called it, the moment caused by the cable. That's the same unit vector, u of x-axis, dotted with r cross f. This time I'm going to use a position vector from this point C to point B, like right here, which we would call r c over b, or r b, excuse me, b over c. And it's just in that y direction, 18 units, so my matrix looks very similar. 
I've got one zero zero on the top. I've got zero eighteen and zero in the middle row for the position vector. And my force vector on the bottom is just these components that I figured in part one. Negative point eight, zero, and point six. Everything is times TBF. Now I've got a, two determinants with a lot of zeros in it, which makes me happy. This one evaluates as one times ten times negative twenty-one sixty. Everything else goes to zero. Plus, this one's one times eighteen times 0.6 TBF. This evaluates out to negative 21,600 plus 10.8 TBF. Therefore, TBF rearranging equals a positive, which is good because I need to have tension, like I assumed. 21,6 divided by 10.8 is 2,000 pounds. And that's the answer. And I can see it makes sense. The only thing creating moment about that x-axis is the, the x part of TBF, which I might show as a little TBF x up here, is parallel to the x-axis. So it, and that's the negative point 0.8. It creates no moment because it's parallel. The only thing that creates moment is this Z component, which is the point 0.6, which is TBF Z, and then the 21.6. Those two offset, those have to offset to create, or to keep the, keep the whole thing from rotating about the x-axis. So 